Hello YouTube, I Fix It All here, Team I Fix It All. Today is uh, one of those days that I like because I get to innovate and create. Um, we're going to be using our raised garden bed as a greenhouse because every one of these uh, bays has a reserve amount of space of about five or six inches. So what I have in mind here is I'm going to, oops, I've got a 16 foot long piece of pig fencing. How do you know it's pig fencing? Because this is the bottom. If that's the bottom of the fencing, the little piglets can't fit through this opening, but if they get taller than this, then they can't fit through these openings. I, I learned that from a friend of ours, but people call it cattle fencing or whatever. <clears throat> this is 16 foot long, a little over five foot, uh, four foot wide. Um, here's my plan. I'm going to wrap this, this away with some of that saran wrap stuff you can get at Lowe's on a roll. It's clear like saran wrap, but it's like two foot wide. But I'm just going to wrap the whole thing in saran wrap all the way down. And then I can uh, stand it up. I can probably tie it off down there, make a couple of ho hooks up here, but I'll set my seed pot, my, my, my little seed starter pots down and I'll floof, move and scooch around the, the leaves and set my seed starter pots down in here and I'll close the lid. Let's think this through. <clears throat> That's saran wrap on top. Let's take a look at our little baby saran wrap plastic sack uh, where my my uh, peaches are. The sun is way low right now. It's getting close to evening time. This is showing 70 some degrees inside there, so I got to bring these in. Uh, these are my peach seed. But if the sun's beating directly on this, it can get well over, it can get well up into 120 some degrees. That's why I've got it propped open here to ventilate. If I talk too much, this isn't TikTok. This is an important video because it allows me to get my seed starting episode outside in the appropriate window of time, but yet utilize my raised garden beds as a greenhouse. So here's our requirements. Uh, scientifically looking at this. One of the requirements is I need that to produce heat for me when the temperature gets low. That would be at night. This is February 23rd, 22nd, 20. I think it's really, I've been having trouble. I think it's 22nd, February 2023 right now, February 22nd. All right, so here are the requirements. This is like a scope of work, okay? So I'm the client and I'm working for me. I need this area that's gonna house these seed starters to stay warm when temperatures get below a certain parameter. I need my seed, uh, I need that to not produce heat if the temperatures outside get to be a certain temperature and I need my seeds to be contained within a greenhouse environment so we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll get moving on that for uh, but for first things first here is uh, look at all the room I've got uh, a 16 foot worth of space that gives me Every one of those turnbuckles is a stall. This is bay one, stall one, two, three, and four. I told the wife, I said, I can only imagine that I'll have seed pods in maybe stall one and two and three. So right here, 
underneath I'll probably stand up a board from the rear toward the front and close the lid and if I don't need that area then so what I don't need that area but it'll it'll keep my heat in this area under here one of the troubles that uh, there's a lot of troubles here with thinking this through but again if you stay within the boundaries of your scope of work you know what you're after if the temperature gets below a certain amount you want this to produce heat and if temperatures get above a certain amount you don't want to be producing any heat because then you'll cook off your seedlings you'll damage your stuff and another interesting requirement is I need wind periodic wind to strengthen those little seedlings too so let's see what we're gonna do to do all this because I've hatched an idea hang tight okay guys I'm back we're on our workbench now so I've got a couple of heater mats Um, let me see, 10 by 20 by, yeah, 10 by 20 and three quarter. And they're 120 volt powered, both of them. So what I want to do is lay these, yeah, here lay these spaced out appropriately lay these under my saran wrap covered uh, cattle fencing or fencing material lay these in the raised garden bed to produce heat when required i could just simply plug them in and run back and forth all the time during the whole night and I'll never get any sleep. We still got a lot of cold days ahead of us. Uh, we're going through a warm spell right now. How do I automate this? Well, you're thinking with a thermostat, Scott. Well, of course. Well, how do I do this and not spend any money? How, how do I use what I have to automate this well I have electricity available to me out there at um, at the um, raised garden beds these are 120 volt AC and it says 20 watts double check that Yep, 20 watts. So, uh, 20 watts divided by 120 volt AC. They draw a 16th of an amp times 1.25 to size the overcurrent protection device. It's uh, 0.208 or 0.21 amps. Let's just call it a quarter amp. So each one of these draws about a quarter amp. All right, now I need something that's able, I want both of these mats to be in the raised garden bed, but under the fencing material. <clears throat> these two together is going to be about a half amp current draw. I need something that's automated that meets my requirements for producing heat when heat is required. I've got a real clever solution for um, th the worst case scenario here is when it is warm outside and the sun is out. That's my enemy because my heater mats will not be on, but yet the panel is down and the sun's beating on it and from doing my experiments with the peach seeds i'm learning that 
temperatures could get as high as 120 degrees under that plastic, that saran wrap that I'm going to wrap on that fencing material. The temperatures could get so drastically high that I could actually hurt my uh, seedling. So, the solution to that, that scenario, which is again, when the temperatures are high, the mats are not on, and the sun is out, that's when I will just simply go out there. If I can just look at the forecast and say, well, it looks like today I'm going to prop the fencing up and let it ventilate, but also let it get sunshine. Because um, I think I've got everything else solved. So I need these to power up when it's chilly in my little miniaturized version of a greenhouse. All right. So here's my heater mats. I'll use two of these to produce radiant heat in that little void area that's only going to be about five or six inches high and maybe six or seven feet long by about two and a half foot wide. These will become radiant heat mats, which that's what they are already, but they'll be in, they'll be contained because that fencing will be folded down and there'll be plastic, clear plastic that's wrapped on it. Trying to be detailed because a lot of things deserve explanation. So, this is what I'm going to use to automate it. This is a really old school thermostat. This powered up a baseboard heater in my home, but the baseboard heater was uh, 220 volt, which means it needed two hot legs and a ground. And that's the way it was. It was a two wire circuit. But the thing is, what makes this so neat is it's all mechanical. There's um, This thermostat is not powered by a 24 volt AC step down transformer. It literally lived in our wall for years, <clears throat> handing off, making and breaking full on 220 volt AC to a baseboard heater. How did it do that? Well, that's why I hung on to these, because I found these would be useful for me one day. So right here is the cover, and the cover is just representing a visual thing for humans to see that it is currently 60 degrees in my garage, and I've already calibrated this. I'll explain that in a minute, but just so we can see, to put it up against another thermometer... They're both pretty close. Um, I'm not complaining about that. That's almost, in my book, almost dead on. So, the snap-off cover, let's see if you guys can see what's going down here. So, the cover integrates a independent, isolated simple thermometer that I'm sure is just a wound up little spring and a needle and it is uh, adjustable because there's a little flathead screw there on the back where you can adjust it if you see that it's a little bit out <clears throat> what makes this unique here is that this is a the actual business end of it this thermometer mechanism literally makes and breaks something to point with again makes and breaks two independent micro switches uh, I'm calling them micro switches because that's what I know them by but they're separate they're got this cardboard on it you can see the molding right here. This is defined by the manufacturer as a uh, model M7-Delta. 
it is a double line break. In other words, I expect this to be one on off switch separated from this as one on off switch. It also tells me that these are rated for up to eight, uh, 22 amps. 277 or 220 volts AC. I won't get into the 277 part, but it's a uh, higher voltage, less current you can draw. But what I do know is uh, actually it says 18 amps at 277 volts AC or 22 amps at 125 or 250 volts AC. Double line break. What's going on here? All right, so this is a thing that the human interfaces with right here. You have these numbers here. This 5 represents 50 degrees. That's 60. That's 70. If you listen real close, hear that clicking? Well, what's going on is the way this metal is designed it has a cam right here that's going to, it's machined in such a way that it pushes this metal, and I'll turn it all the way off so we can probably see it better. This metal here is stamped with information. It, it's thermal, it's temperature um, reactive metal, meaning that it's like a, at a certain temperature it'll change shape. This whole metal plate here is the actual calibrated thermostat. And there is two little knobs down there that make and break contact. They're micro switches like this. Side-by-side -side micro switches. This one happens to have a lever. I'll bend that out of the way for now so we can see what's going on. That has a button. And that has a button. That's what's going on here. Each one of these has their own little button on the front side that this metal plate is pushing on. And I'll hang tight and I'll show you more. Okay, so I took this, uh, this knob off here. The actual adjustment cam, so you can see what all is going on. Just so I could fold this piece of metal up. This is the bimetal. Bimetal is a technical term referred to a piece of metal that changes its physical shape in relationship to temperature change. And... Um, that's what this piece of metal does. It physically changes its shape based on temperature shape. Uh, temperature. It changes its shape based on temperature. And as a result, it makes and breaks these micro switches. There's a button. Now this one doesn't click as good. Hardly at all. But it still makes and breaks contact. I can barely hear it clicking, but this one's the most audible. And hence the reason why I've got it marked in uh, red paint to designate. Uh, one day I must have, that was like a note to myself, but this was still useful for something one day because it's, it's functional. So that's what's going on here. This is a, um, a full-on mechanical thermostat. <clears throat> what I had to do was, you see these two screws here? These screws are the business end because those screws translate on the other side as a head. 
and those heads line up with the the button that makes or breaks the switch. So what I had to do earlier yesterday evening was I sat out here and I calibrated both screws so that when this metal changes shape in relation to temperature, both of these are coordinated together, breaking both my hot, uh, breaking, opening both circuits. I'm, this is intended to transfer 120 volts up this leg and 120 volts up this leg to power a 220-240 volt device, which was a baseboard heater. These are designed to withstand up to 20-some amps. I only need a half amp. Let me put this back together, and let me show you what I got planned. So now that I know I found something that can be automatic, that can cut on and cut off, uh, this is going to work just like a regular thermostat. If I set my temperature for 70 degrees, I'll line up the 7. I'll line up the 7. And as soon as my heated area gets up to 70 degrees, this will automatically kill power to the device producing the heat, which will be my two heater mats. But I want to do a couple of tests to make sure it works right. So hang tight. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my hot leg of an extension cord in here and my neutral here. It could be the other way around. It doesn't matter. And on this side, I'm going to have the hot leg of a light bulb and the ground side of a light bulb wired to these two screws, hot and ground for the light bulb and hot and ground coming from my outlet. Hang tight. Let's see what we can come up with here. That's too bright. Another requirement I have is that I want to, I, I want this to be automated, but I don't want to have to, um, I want to be able to see if the um, the greenhouse is operating as I want it to while I'm inside my house. This is going to be my device that supplies power to my heating mats. But I want to be able to, out my living room window, look out and look outside and see if it's working or not. So I'm probably going to end up integrating a light bulb to this and mounting this in such a way to where I can see it from the living room. That's probably another good idea. If I can see that it's on from the living room, and I know how it's designed, then I know the heater mats have kicked on. Hang tight. Let's look for a, a test lamp to fire this up and see, see if it's working. Okay, back to the lamps. That looks like a good candidate. Let's see if I got something that's more ready-made. one of those guys. Yes. There's a good test lamp already on a socket. Got this fancy schmancy bulb. Take a look at that guy. It's got a little dome in there. I know what these look like. They look like a nice soft glowy orange lamp. A perfect socket. I might be able to rig this thing up right here. Somehow, let me get it wired up there. I'm going to hook the lamp up here. I'm going to hook the lamp up here. And I'm going to hook up my extension cord here. It's just a hot and a ground, or hot and neutral, I should call it. 
Hang tight. Okay, so I got me a light wired in and an extension cord wired in. I don't know if the polarities are right or not on this cord. By the way, um, on two wire cords, one of the wires will have a rough, almost sharp edge to it. And the other one will be nice and roundy. That was some sort of thing that was passed in the uh, late 70s. It had to do with blind people. And um, them being able to grab a two-wire cord and feel it down here they could grab the cord and with their eyes closed they could feel and say okay am I plugging my cord in correctly or not believe it or not that's why that is and it's a standard one side is rough feeling and the other side is nice and roundy and the rough one is your return or your neutral or your ground uh, please don't bust my balls because that's not a ground but it is okay there's the hot leg and there's the ground it's actually the neutral so I don't even have to and, and then you would feel with your finger on the outlet which opening is longer on more modern day outlets that's why um, if you can look into that you can see that this big roundy thing is supposed to be your safety ground the bigger slot is your neutral and the little slot is your hot I can feel that with my fingers <clears throat> I can literally tell there's more room over here. So a blind person could um, none of this is making sense, but that's why it is. Okay? This is, has to do with the reason why these cords are like this is because it designates the neutral leg of the cord visually. So, <clears throat> I've got an extension cord wired up here. Remember, these are two independent switches. So, literally, the thermostat itself, this full-on mechanical thermostat, it's mechanical because it's dependent on this piece of metal deforming itself based on its ambient room temperature, and it makes or breaks in a coordinated manner both of these at the same time therefore if I plug this in the lights either going to come on or off I already know that my uh, my thermometer here is pretty much matching up to another thermometer and it's calibrated correctly and I spent a little bit of time last night calibrating these two screws to make sure that this number matches this number because this number means 70 because I'm on a number 7 that would be 60 50 so on and so forth and just me sitting here holding this is raising the temperature of the entire unit uh, it's really, re that metal there is extremely sensitive to temperature change. So I'm turning off the, thermos the thermostat. I'm in the off position. You can't see it because the word off is broken off. I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to expect the lamp to stay off. Give it some power. And the lamp stayed off. Maybe if I turn this big old huge lamp off up here, we can get more visual input here. Let's zoom in on the work area. Let's bring you a little closer. 
So I'm going to treat this like a thermostat. I'm going to turn it up and see uh, when the light bulb fires off. Fires off meaning lights up. So that's telling me right now that power is going to go out to the light bulb when the temperature gets lower than 70 degrees. For some reason right now it's firing off at the number 7-ish, uh, depending on how well centered I am. You guys can see the 7. My garage says it's currently uh, 63 in the garage. I've got a lamp on here. I'm radiating heat down. I might actually have a temperature difference. I'm not real sure. All right, so let's overheat this thing. I'm just going to see if I can make the lamp go off with my breath. I don't know if I can or not. I'm going to mess with this for a second. Hang tight. Okay, so since I took this off earlier, uh, the... Uh, the knob here was not matching what the thermometer said there. So I needed to retweak these two screws. Uh, but I'll know it's right if I can just have the least amount of temperature change on this. So I'm going to see if my actual breath can cause it to switch over. The light's on currently. There we go. Here we go. All right, my breath made it go out. And it is kind of warmish in here, but my knob says about 62. My thermometer says about 62 on the cover. I warmed that up with my breath, so that killed power. Now it cooled back off again, and the light came back on. So... We have a automated controls mechanism here. So now let me rig up a way to tie in my heater mats. Hang tight. So I've got my uh, multimeter hooked up, but I don't have meter leads. I have something called a temperature probe that's plugged into it that comes with this type of meter. I really recommend this meter to general purpose electricians and advanced electricians. Um, it doesn't have an amp clamp. But it does do things like temperature and frequency and diode and all kinds of cool things. Uh, right now, my temperature probe is probably needing replaced. Either the probe itself. Um, give you a look at this. I think it's either a J or a K wire. Or the adapter here. Um... But right now it's reading something like 100 degrees. What we really don't care about that. What we're looking for is a change in temperature by way of plugging the heater mats into this. And what I plan to do is 
see if the heater mats kick on and off by simply laying the temperature probe down on there with a block of wood. So let's get to that. Let's see. First things first. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to plug one heater mat in. And I'm going to plug my thermostat in. The thermostat is currently off. So I'm going to plug that in. And I'm going to watch the temperature there. Right now it's saying like 99.9. .9. Or 100. We don't really care about that. We just want to see if it changes and nothing blows up. So I'm going to test the first mat. This is my first mat that's plugged in. Set the block of wood down on top of this. This isn't, this, this temperature wire is doing nothing more than just simply uh, monitoring temperature. Like I could touch it with my fingertips right now and it'll go up to like whatever it's doing right now 114 115 and I could cool it off uh, in some water I don't know what this water is but we'll just see what it does see it going down see there's something uh, I need a replacement temperature probe but no biggie It might need cleaned, too, with some decent acetone on the end, because if it has a lot of grease buildup... Matter of fact, let me do that. Hang tight. Every garage should have some fingernail polish remover, but be careful with the stuff. It takes paint off. But it's a good cleaner for just about anything you need to get cleaned up. Hang tight. That helped a little bit. But let's uh, see what the heck these mats do. I haven't tried this yet, so let's see. Uh, we're in a situation where all we got to do is turn the thermometer till the light bulb comes on. And monitor our multimeter. Okay, light's on. Heater mat should be warming up. Yep, it's going up in temperature. kind of simulating what I have to do out in the garden area. So if I just set this knob to like 8, that would be 80 degrees. Oops. Yeah, so if I set that to like 80 degrees, then that heater mat won't will produce heat until the raised garden bed reached 80 degrees. But as you can see, it's continuing to climb. We have a direct, um, yeah, we're, 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 we're heating up. Yeah, I can, feels like I can feel the heat. Let's find a warmer spot. I'll bet that the, uh, Temperature is more apparent closer to where the input cord is. That was my guess. Yep, that's what I guessed. 104, 7, 8. Should go to 9. 
went to seven. And then it went to six. Turn this light off and you can see that is still on. 1044, what the hell is going on? Find a warmer zone. Because I don't know how that little uh, heating element in that pad has wound up either. I don't know. I can't feel. Let me pause it for a little bit. I'm going to leave everything as it is. That way you guys can see that I didn't touch anything. Okay, I've been away for a little while. Um, probably like five minutes. It's up to about 110. I can definitely feel the heat kicking in over there. This will get a lot warmer. Let's test the other mat. Okay, so temperature's coming down. Let's see if I can... Well, it's, it's coming down. Let's plug in the other heater mat. <clears throat> and let's uh, simulate a, um, a situation where both are plugged in. Let's see if we can blow something up. And we'll lay the thermometer on this other heater mat. I noticed the upper corner, like right here, got warm first. Probably stack this on top just to instigate some more heat. Nah. Can you guys see that? Yeah, I believe so. So, I'm going to set it down on this corner here. If I can. Right here. I'll uh, leave things like this for a couple of minutes, and we shall see what it says when I get when I unpause it. Hang tight. All right, guys, I'm back, and uh, it looks like I screwed up. My finger hit stop, so I got to splice two videos together. Uh, I do this manually, so it's not a pain. It's just that I don't use any kind of web-based video splicing and editing at all. I just hit pause, and um, I went to um, uh, the Wayback Internet to get Windows Movie Maker for Windows 7. And uh, that's what I'm going to use. I'll just splice these two videos together. So temperature is right around 110, 8 or 9. It's been about 4 minutes or 5. Coming up to temperature pretty good. So you can see what I've got here. All I have to do is build an enclosure for this and get the lamp included and have this lamp assembly 
available for me visually to see from the living room to know that at nighttime it's coming on when it's colder than my selected temperature on my thermometer and it can deliver high current out to devices like heater mats. I may um, also in series with the power output to this plug put an inline fuse of let's say um, for now I'll do an inline fuse holder and probably do like a uh, a one amp maybe a two amp two would probably be better and uh, that concludes this video so you can see what I got going on this is going to be the materials I use for heating up my DIY automated greenhouse system to sprout my seedlings. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.